Good afternoon, students. Before we get started today, I have a question for you. I don't know if you can answer it, but here it is. So I went to the store the other day. I went down to the HEB and I bought two bags of Jolly Ranchers, three bags of M&Ms and five bags of Twizzlers. I want to know, what do you think I have? If the answer is diabetes, the answer is no. <laughs> um, even though if I did eat all that candy, I would be on the fast track to have diabetes, which would not be great. Or also probably cavities. You could have also answered cavities. If I ate all that candy, I would probably have cavities. But the correct answer is candy, right? M&Ms, Twizzlers, and Jolly Ranchers are all types of candy. We would say candy is the common name of those three things that I bought, okay? Common name is going to be something that's really important today. Today, we're talking about adding and subtracting fractions, okay? And something that makes adding and subtractions a little bit tedious is that we have to find something that's called the common denominator or the common name of the fraction. So if this is your second time watching the video, go ahead and take a pause so you can get down the three step process. Please make sure you leave a little bit more space under number one. Number two and number three, you can leave maybe about four or five lines and that should be enough space. Go ahead and take a pause and get it written down. All right, so let's talk about how we add and subtract fractions. Um, for most of you, this is probably going to be a review, but we're actually gonna you know, make sure we include those negative fractions because now we have negatives involved in our work. So we'll talk about how that might apply to these situations. So the first thing you wanna do when you have a problem where you have to add and subtract fractions is you, is you need to check and see if you have to find a common name for the fraction. So for example, if you had the fraction one fifth plus two fifths, they already have a common name, it's fifths. They both have five as the denominator. However, if they don't have a common name or a common denominator, you can use the least common multiple in order to convert your fractions with the common name. So let's say, for instance, we're actually going to do a problem that involves negatives. We're just going to do it right out the gate just to so you can see how it works. Let's say we have negative one half and we're going to add negative three over 15. Okay, so we'll talk about how the negatives apply in a moment, but we want to look at our common, I'm sorry, our uncommon denominators. We have two and 15. And so if we were to find the least common multiple, remember the least common multiple is when we make a list and we count by those numbers. So if I count by two, that's like two, four, six, eight, and that one goes on I mean, they all go on forever, but this one in particular has a lot of numbers, right? Because we're only counting by two. If I count by 15, 15, 30, 45, uh, 60, and it goes on and on and on <clears throat> as well, okay? So if I were to find the least common, the one they have in common, that's the smallest, um, 30 is actually going to be that number two can go up to 30. If we kept counting, it would have gone off our page if we kept the list going, but 30 is the least common, uh, denominator between one half and three fifteenths, or it's the least common, uh, multiple between two and 15. So the way that we would rewrite these fractions with our common denominator is, so we're going to take, uh, one half, I'm going to put the negative off to the side, um, and so our new fraction is going to be negative. I want the denominator to be equivalent to something over 30. So we have to look at what times two makes 30 and that's 15. So we're gonna do the same thing here to the top. One times 15 uh, is 15. So the new fraction, when we convert it to its common name, one half is equivalent to 15 thirtieths, which makes sense, right? 15 is half of 30. Let's do three fifteenths. So we have negative three fifteenths, and this is going to be equivalent to something, the negative version of something out of 30. So we have to look at what times 15 makes 30, 15 times two makes 30. So if we do the top three times two is six. So six over 30 is going to be equivalent to three over 15, but in terms of 30ths. So the problem that we're now going to be working with, I'm just going to go ahead and write it under step number two, is negative 15 30ths 
plus negative six thirtieths. And you'll notice the negatives didn't change the way that we convert um, our fractions with the common denominator because the negatives apply to the entire fraction. That's why we kind of write them off to the side almost like parallel with the fraction bar. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to add or subtract the numerators, okay? We are adding two negative numbers. So that means our answer is still going to be negative, okay? If we were adding a positive, what we would then do is we would treat the numerator of whatever fraction is negative, we would treat that as a negative number. And then we would treat the numerator of the positive number as a positive. So you still have to follow your integer rules. Your practice questions will show you an example of a situation where we're adding with different signs. So um, we're still gonna just add like we typically would. 15 plus six is 21. And then we already have our common denominator of 30. So remember, we don't have to add our denominators together because basically this is saying, okay, we have 15 thirtieths and thirtieths are like the size of pieces. We have six thirtieths. How many do we have all together? And that's 21 thirtieths. So our answer is negative 21 thirtieths. Um, however, the last step is we need to make sure uh, to double check and see if we need to simplify. So we have negative 21 thirtieths. So we always check to see if we can simplify a fraction using the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor between 21 and 30 is we could divide both of these by three. They can both be divided by three. So if we do this, 21 divided by three is seven, 30 divided by three is 10. And remember, this is still a negative answer. So our answer is going to be negative seven tenths after we simplify, okay? so. This was a three-step process for adding fractions. It would have been the same thing if we subtracted, but we would have subtracted the numerators instead of add them. So we wanna convert our fractions to have a common name. We wanna add or subtract the numerators depending on what the question's asking us. And we wanna simplify our fraction using the greatest common factor. OK, the last thing I want to mention to you guys are some helpful tips. If this is your second time watching the video, you can pause and kind of briefly write them down. All right, so helpful tips. If you have mixed numbers, please convert them into improper fractions, okay? It makes finding the common name or common denominator much easier. So convert any of your mixed numbers into improper fractions. Please make sure you're following the integer rules. So think about what happens when we add two negatives, like which is what we did up here. Think about um, you know when you add a negative plus a positive, what happens and what happens when you subtract a negative. Make sure you're following your integer rules. And then the last step is if you can simplify at the start, I would encourage you to do that. So for example, up at the top, we have the number 3 fifteenths. And 3 fifteenths can actually simplify. We can divide both of those by 3. And this simplifies to um, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So this simplifies to 1 fifth. So we could have simplified at the start of that other problem. And then the new problem would have been negative 1 half plus uh, negative 1 fifth. Um, the answer would still end up being the same, but we would work with smaller numbers then um, instead of, you know, a bigger number like 15. OK, so if you could simplify at the start, I would encourage you to do that. Um, now that you have seen how we need to add and subtract numbers, the key to remember is mainly just to always follow those integer rules. So here are your practice problems for this lesson. All right, here you go. You have four practice problems today. Let me focus it and then you can pause. All right, go ahead and pause so you can get your questions. All right, so your practice questions today are um, doing three and one fifth minus five and a half, uh, negative three eighths plus negative 12 eighths. Four over five minus negative one third. And then the final question, negative six and one fourth plus five and three fourths. Do not forget to convert your mixed numbers. Do not forget to follow your integer rules. The fraction, uh, or I'm sorry, the negative sign does apply 
to the entire fraction. But when you get to the point where you're ready to add and subtract, remember that you use that sign for the numerator. OK, um, but keep in mind, sometimes when we add or subtract and we have negatives, like we could end up at a positive. So it doesn't always necessarily mean that your answer is going to be negative. If you have any questions while you're working on the practice questions, you can check the answers in the table of contents to see um, if you got it correct. If you got it wrong, maybe double check your integer rules. If you're still struggling or if you have any questions about this process, please make sure you write them down in your need to ask section. And as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.